Yes. Ken McIntosh, MSP, the captain of the Parliament side. What are you expecting today? I should first point out I'm captain because I organise it and not because of ability. Uh, it guarantees me a game. Uh, hopefully a bit of fun, hopefully some profile for supporters direct. As you know, we've just put um, uh, passed legislation in the Scottish Parliament which gives more powers to supporters to take control of their own clubs. Uh, the conference today will hopefully discuss these sort of issues. This is just to be friendly to draw attention and hopefully to um, get some political interest as well as uh, fan interest. It's all about raising the interest, it's all about getting fans involved. Uh, get, getting fans more involved in clubs can only be a good thing and it, can, it should grow as much as we can get it to, to, to do. I mean, we all know that, support, that, that football clubs entirely rely on their fans and yet fans are treated by their clubs and by the game sometimes as a sort of nuisance factor rather than as the, the key to the game. I think the whole point of Supporters Direct and the work that they're doing is to try and put the supporters back at the heart of it and realise that there's a huge asset there. In many cases, the clubs need the supporters to keep going. You know, their, their ownership, they're not sure where to go next. They might be in family ownership. They're not quite sure what the succession is going to be. The supporters are there. They're at the heart of the community. And I think that this game is just a, another way of drawing attention to the fact that the supporters play a crucial role. Is it fair to say that, that football and fans is something that goes across all parties in politics, the, the, the need to get more involvement? You're absolutely right. This is a cross-party game uh, and certainly, the, for example, the legislation that we've just passed through the Scottish Parliament was supported unanimously by all the parties. Uh, it's, not, it's quite funny because football and politics are quite often compared. You know, they both can be quite tribal at times, quite partisan, but actually there's far more that unites us than divides us and hopefully we'll show that today. Now, we, you, you mentioned just a minute ago that we need to get more interest in fans and more interest in fan ownership and the Parliament is, is very much a big way to make that happen. Is it on your radar going forward, do you think, to do more? Oh, absolutely. Uh, the, what's happened is the, the bill has now been passed, the primary legislation, but we have to put secondary legislation in place, the detail, the actual detail of how we get supporters involved. Uh, the devil's in the details, so it's quite it's crucial that we get this right. And to my mind, it's important that the, fa the fans themselves, the supporters, are the ones that try and guide that and shape that, that they say what they want out of this, what, what responsibility they're willing to shoulder, you know, because it's difficult. It's difficult for fans to raise the money, never mind anything else. So we want to know, you know, what kind of role do fans have? Some fans don't want to run their clubs, quite clear, but they're very keen that their, their, fan, that their club has a stable, you know, secure, sustainable uh, future. So it's trying to get that balance right and uh, you know hopefully parliamentarians can play a role in that too. Well let's go away from the politics for a minute into the on-pitch activities. Uh, I've looked at who Supporters Direct have got out there, there's some ex-footballers who played at the top of the game, there's some current footballers at the top of the game. Best well in the world, you guys are all well, getting on a bit, how do you think this game's going to go? <laughs> I said, we don't even have parliamentarians at the top of our game, so uh, I, I don't know. I, I, if you've seen the shape of some of us, you know, we, we, are, we enjoy our game and we usually actually try to play friendlies against other mixed ability teams, if I can put it that way. I just noticed Motherwell ladies are playing against us. This is, this is going to be, you know, so never mind Tommy Boyd and Gordon Smith and Nandy Gorham. We are going to, well, we'll see what happens. But, you know, we've got a decent football team. We play for fun. Uh, we've actually had a few... Um, misdemeanours in this park so we, we, we won a game but we, it was abandoned when we were 6-1 up so hopefully we don't have that kind of game, we have a, a more fun more evenly balanced and good tempered game here Before I ask you about the score, how often does this team play? Um, three or four times a year maybe and, and I, I'd love to say we're in training in between games but as you can probably see by just having a look at us, that's not the case Who's your best player? Who should we watch out for? Um, John, John Park, who used to be an MSP, is probably, oh, well, he's not an MSP now, he works for a community who sponsored the whole game. Um, probably our best sort of parliamentarian player, Frank McAvee's going to kill me for saying that. George Redmond, councillor George Redmond, very good player. Uh, Neil Bibby, MSP, his brother, uh, resembles Peter Crouch and plays like Peter Crouch too. The good parts, that is. So uh, there, there are a few of the ones to watch out for. And finally, before I let you go, what's your prediction for the score? It's a bit like uh, calling the result of the general election or the election. There's not a chance you get a prediction out of me, or at least one that's going to be anywhere likely to be accurate. Well, good luck today. It should be a good game. It's floodlit. It's nine o'clock on a Sunday morning. That's Scotland. <laughs> Thanks very much. And in the rain, at least we're not clearing the, show, the snow off the pitch, which I thought we would be this morning. Good luck. Thanks.